These are the fruiting bodies of a fungus. Their function is to produce dust-like spores which are then blown away through the woodland to grow elsewhere. But these are only a tiny part of the fungus. Most of the body of the fungus is beneath the ground, a tangle of tiny threads which extend for hundreds of yards through the forest. And we're now beginning to realize that those threads are essential for the growth and health of many of the woodland plants. The length of these threads is almost unbelievable. One specimen in America was found to extend across nearly four square miles. That's an area 16 times bigger than Kew Gardens itself. Technically speaking, it's the largest known living organism on the planet. fungi make a living by feeding on the dead tissues of other organisms, both plant and animal. They produce powerful chemicals that enable them to break down about 90% of all organic matter, including leaves and wood. In doing this, they release the nutrients into the soil that plants need to fuel their new growth in the spring. So fungi are essential links in the cycle of life. But some fungi establish partnerships with plants while the plants are still alive. And they are just as important. This is the Luckham Oak. It germinated from an acorn in the year 1762, and it's one of the oldest plants in Kew. Its roots are covered with a fungus, but that's not an affliction. That's the reason why this tree was able to live for so long. Because the fungus can do something that the oak tree can't. It can extract nitrogen directly from the soil, and then the oak tree collects it from the fungus. And in return, the fungus takes sugars from the sap in the roots of the oak tree. So it's a mutually convenient arrangement, a symbiotic relationship. In fact, we now know that around 90% of the species of plants on the earth depend upon fungi one way or another. Ooh.